what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back giving to new video guys. Today I'm here with my pastor, Pastor Silas. My name is Pastor Silas and I'm here with the Perseverance. Guys, today I'm really excited. Um, this video is new. It's Christianity leading you to paradise or hell. Dr. Zakir Nag. This is going to be our first time checking this out. I'll still check out to you guys. Um, you know how I do? Talk to us right now, we ask more. Let's get into this video. Finally, um, my name's Tanya. I work for Cisco. Uh, I'm not here to disagree with anything, but I've always had a lot of people, especially Muslims, well, not a lot of people, just Muslims, always telling me, because you're a Catholic, you're going to go to Jahannam, but we're Muslims, you need to convert and you will go to heaven. According to me, I'm a good Catholic. I try to be a good Catholic. I don't intentionally commit sin. But does that mean because I'm a Catholic, I'm going to go to hell? And if I'm a Muslim, I'm going to go to heaven? Sister asked a question that many of her Muslim friends say, because she's a Catholic, because she's a Christian, she will go to hell. That is it true that because she's a Christian, you will go to hell? Sister, according to me, if you're a true Christian, if you truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, inshallah, you shall go to Jannah. But, but, if you truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, seek ye the truth and the truth shall free you. Correct? Now, what you are following, I don't know. Are you following your church or are you following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? If you are following your church, the chances of going to Jannam is very high. If you are following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, inshallah, inshallah, you shall go to Jannah. Now, if you read the Bible, there are sayings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I don't know how much you are well versed with the Bible. Now, all the sayings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, are in red letter. Are in? Right. Red letter. Mm. Sister, do you believe Jesus to be God? Well, I'm a bit confused about that, so I'm not going to get into that. No, I'm I asking just... yes or no. Well... Confused God. No, it's, it's not confusion, but I don't want to answer something I don't know. And it's not funny. I'm not saying it's you know or not. Sister, I'm not saying you know or not. What do you believe I'm asking? No, I do believe he's God. Yes, yes that's it. I'm not saying yes. what you know. You may not I be do. able to prove it. Yeah, Fine. I do. Sister, I'll tell you one thing. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. Yeah. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind lepers with God's permission. The Christian and the Muslim, they are going together. But one may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is, sister, that most of the Christians, almost all, they believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is Almighty God. They believe he claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement. There is not a single unambiguous statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. Sister, if you can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement, anywhere from the Bible, in which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. In fact, if you read the Bible... I'm not talking about you accepting I'll come to it. Or not. I'm I, not. I got my answer already. I'm giving you... Yes. I, I'm, I got my answer. You got half the answer. I'm giving the complete answer, okay. Insha. You can go ahead. You got half the answer. Okay. I told you that if you're a true Christian, you shall go to Jannah. Yes. You don't know what a true Christian is. I'm giving you information about what true Christian is. Okay. 
If you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God is a Muslim. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, submitted his will to God. He was a Muslim. He never said he was God. It's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 24. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that the words that you hear are not mine, but my Father's who has sent me. And it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. So Jesus Christ is a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. So from the Bible we come to know that Jesus Christ was one of the most beloved messengers of Almighty God. We love him, we respect him. Do we follow his teachings? If you compare what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Bible, I told that yesterday that we Muslims, we follow more of the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of Luke, he was circumcised on the eighth day. We Muslims are circumcised most of the Christian land. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, you have to follow each and every law. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17. Everything of the Old Testament, you can't break one law or dot or a title. As I mentioned in my speech, it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse number 8, in the book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse 2 to 5, and the book of Leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 7 to 8, that you should not have pork. We Muslims don't have pork, but most of the Christians have pork. It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 18, book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse number 1, you should not have alcohol. Muslims don't have alcohol, but Christians have alcohol. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. So if you become a true Christian and truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I go, shall I send him? It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that here shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Verbatim quotation from the Bible, King James Version. So Jesus Christ is prophesying about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you're a true Christian, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you're a true Christian, you'll believe in Prophet Muhammad and inshallah you shall go to Jannah. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think about this one? <laughs> because it feels like he knows more about the scriptures. Oh, he knows about the scriptures. Basically, the scriptures, scriptures, scriptures. He, he is, I mean, the Bible is accessible to anybody. Anybody can sure. pick scriptures and then just add one or two things and then drop theories and philosophies. I will start with the ending part where he said, the last end messenger of the... Of, um, but Jesus spoke about in John, John 16, he was talking about Muhammad. And uh, I, will, I will stress it. If, if, he spoke about Mo, if he spoke about Muhammad as that one that would come and be a comforter, where is Muhammad today? Muhammad is dead. So if he's meant to be a comforter and he's meant to abide with us forever, why are we without him? I mean, he's supposed to abide with us. He didn't. He was not supposed to die in the first place. That was the fact. That's true. He's not supposed to die in the first place. If he was meant to be the one that Jesus spoke about in John 16, and he's meant to abide with him, if you read that John 16, he said, he will abide with you forever. He didn't just talk about his teachings. He will abide with you forever. So, how come... He's not here with us. We can only point out to him, we can only look out, look out for him from the things he has written. 
if you say someone is abiding with you, meaning I can hear your voice every time, you can talk to me every time. I wouldn't need to go and look for a material just to get to you. I can sit down with you here and I know that you are here with me. That's what it means to abide. To stay with somebody perpetually, dwell, to menor. John 14 verse 10. Believers thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He doeth he dwells the works. Believe me that I am in the Father. And the I Father am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else. No, let's take note of that. Believe that word, I am in the Father. And the Father is what? In me. Does it not speak of oneness? True. It speaks of oneness. The Father in me and I in the Father. If you go to John 17, let's read John. Let me, let me, I think, I wish I came with Bible because sorry, there's so much to say. Now let's read, let's start from verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give an eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. What's that? Hmm. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before this word was. So, are you, I, are you now these are the same. If, if it was a King James Bible, you sit in red letters. These are the very words of Jesus speaking to the Father. This was before he was going to die on the cross. He was saying, The Father should glorify him with that glory he had with him, meaning he was dwelling with God the Father. True. See it. I, I didn't write it. He said, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So, upon coming to earth, that glory, he left it and came down. That's true. Let's go on. Let's go on. That's true. I have manifested their name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they way, and thou givest them me and they have kept their word now they have known that all things whatsoever thou has given me are of thee and let me let me just say this and let me just say this for the sake of time the reason why jesus had to acknowledge the father over everything was because there was a predeterminate counsel that sat and said there was going to be a salvation for man and jesus offered himself hmm. Jesus offered himself to be that lamb. He offered himself to be that lamb that would liberate the world. He, he had the choice of saying no, he won't go, but he offered himself for the sake of man. That was how, that's how important our lives are to God. So here he's saying, now God, I had the kind of glory. Father, I had the kind of glory. You know the kind of glory I had in heaven. Now it's time for me. He was talking about where he, at this point he was already preparing to die and then go back to heaven. And it was because of, in fact, it was because of these prayers he made when he died and he resurrected. In the book of Acts, verse 2, the Holy Ghost came upon them. The Holy Ghost coming upon them was a part of the ceremony that happened in heaven. When Jesus ascended, mm -hmm. then the Holy Ghost came and was released upon all flesh because he promised that if he goes to the Father, he released the comfort. comforter. That was the Holy Ghost coming upon him in Acts chapter 2. And they began to speak in other tongues, in different languages, different tribes. And the Bible said, if you go for that, you discover that they were confronted and boldness came upon them to still preach. It wasn't a man that it wasn't a man that empowered those men. Remember these same disciples were the people that Peter denied Jesus and walked away. Many of them neglected Jesus. These same men, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they could preach, and 3,000 people were one in one day. It's not, it, it's not a man, it's not human power that can make 3,000 people give their life to Christ in one day. It's not a man, it's a spirit. 
So you can't you can't talk about the fact that the comfort that Jesus spoke about was a man, it's a spirit. And that spirit is a person. That's true. If you notice the lady, she was kind of like trying to hurry up to leave there because yes. she had gotten her answer. Yeah, got the answer, but he was trying to school her to convert to, to convert. Her. I mean because lady herself is like, okay, if you say I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm going to go to heaven. So there shouldn't be like confusion. Confusion there, like, there exactly. Because he already said it, but then he had to end it by bringing up Mohammed. Mohammed into it. Because then so you have day, to still believe in Mohammed to go to him. At the end of the day, the bringing in of the Mohammed, you are in either he says it there clearly or not, he has negated the fact that Jesus is needed. He wanted to prove to the lady that what she needs is not Jesus, is the Mohammed. You understand? At the point of the day, that's what he was trying to do. Bring in Mohammed so that she can convert. Convert. I wish I would I would bring out bring my uh, King James Bible. You see, red letter written. He said, The glory that I had with thee, it's time for you to restore that glory to me. Before the world was. Before the world was. It's not. So if before the world was, that means you know that he existed. Yes, I've always been saying. That's what you're going to say. Before Abraham. Before Abraham I was. Yeah, I've always been saying it. That's why the Pharisees were angry because they were. They were thinking he was lying, but yeah. they didn't know that he was stuck. He was actually he's, he's the truth personified. That's why in the old covenants they had um, something called the tabernacle, the ark of they have the tabernacle. They yeah. want to add a lot of things inside, and so in the tabernacle they had the way, they had the truth, they had the life. So the way was the entrance into the tabernacle, into the tabernacle. Then the truth. It, that's where you see the table of incense, the table of showbread, and the rest. And then the life, that was the inner place, the holies of holies. That's where you, you, you see the Ark of Covenant, the mercy seat. That's, only, that's the most sacred in the time of the old covenant. Mm. So Jesus coming and saying he's the way, the truth, and the life, the Pharisees found it like blasphemy because they read the book of Moses. That was the that was the tabernacle. That was that temp the temple they would go to worship. How would Jesus come now telling them that he is he that? He himself thing? is the way through. But actually, that's the reality. He is. Those things were actually mirror images. They were symbols pointing to the fact that this is the son coming. If you read, even if you read Genesis, you read Exodus, Leviticus, number, you see shadows, you see symbols, you see signs, you see pointers that reveal that Jesus actually existed. Remember in um, Genesis 1, it said, In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was that form and void. And darkness, and darkness, the earth was that form, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters. Verse 3 said, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. If you read the account of John, they call Jesus what? The light of the world. John 1 says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was what? Who is the word? Jesus. So why do we need to go for argument? Is that even a thing of argument? Just know your Bible. Sure. Uh, this is where it's a bit. It's... <laughs> I like her as a lady, she don't want argument. She yes. doesn't to be prolonged. Basically. She don't want them to convert her to Islam. She just wants to just get her points and go. And the video itself is self-explanatory and mm -hmm. my pastor, you have clarified everything. It's, it's everything in the word of God. So you can go check your Bible out and see for yourself. Comment down below what you think about this video. Subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up. Share the video as many as can subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure you stay. I just want a bag, like an old lady I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers Pass that 808, that don't, don't shake her Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitches in my bed, I got scales all